Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create this awesome currency converter app with React.js. It uses Fixer.io API to fetch the latest currency rates and the app is really responsive. So if I change something here, the opposite value will be updated. And if I change something on this side, then this value will be updated. So as always, we start with an empty React app and let's go to app.js. Okay, now inside, let's just remove everything and let's just leave this empty div, all right? And we don't need this logo. And inside app CSS, we can remove everything. Yes, now back to app.js. And first, let's create some structure for our app. So let's add inputs. So I will create a new component, new file, and let's call this one currency, currency input.js. And here inside, let's define function currency input and it will have all the props here and it will return a div and here export default currency input okay so let's put a class name for example group and here inside let's add an input and a select for now the default value will be one and now let's use two of those groups inside our app.js so here inside our div let's do currency input and let's do this times two like this and this has been imported for me and here we have two currency inputs so every currency input has a regular input and then select to change currencies okay now let's continue with our currency input so here we will use some kind of value so let's do props let's call this one amount and inside our select we need to have our currently selected currency so let's call this one value and here props currency inside our select we need to have options with all our currencies so let's do props currencies map currency and here for every currency let's do option value will be currency and here the name will be also currency like this now it screams it's undefined but we will fix it in a second as the currencies will be an empty array for now and here the same currencies will be an empty array okay now it works so back to currency input and let me define the prop types here so i'll first install prop types so yarn add prop types and now import prop types from prop types and here we can define our prop types so currency input prop types equals all right and here let's define amount will be prop types number required currency will be string that is required and then we also need list of currencies so currencies will be prop types of array like this now back to app.js and now it's screaming that we it's missing some information it misses the amount and currency so let's just put some test data so amount will be one and let's say currency will be us dollar same here Let's also pass this US dollar here to their list of currencies. Okay, now it's better. Now let's use state to put all information there. So first I will do import use state from React. And here I will define my state. So let's do const and it will be amount one and set amount one equals use state and default value will be one now same will be for amount two for other input group amount two set amount two default will be one now we need also currency so currency one and set currency one will be your state and default will be us dollar and same for currency two all right now we can use this state inside our currency inputs. So let's put here currency one and here 
currency two and here let instead of one let's do amount one and inside this one will be amount two okay so now we want to have all possible currencies not just us dollar and for this we'll use fixer io api and i have already created an account so i will just copy this endpoint here and now when the app starts i want to fetch all the latest currency rates so i will use effect for this use effect and here inside my app i will do use effect and this will be empty here so it will run when the app loads and now i want to fetch the rates so let's see how it looks like it looks like this okay so to do the query i will use axios so yarn add axios all right now let's import axios so import axios from axios okay and here inside our use effect we'll do axios get this then response and with the response we want to save all the rates inside our state so let's prepare a state for this let's do const rates and set rates equals use state and default will be an empty array all right so when we get our response we want to do set rates and inside response we have data and inside data we want to get rates so dot rates all right now we can use our rates here so instead of doing those let's do rates now let's check our app okay we don't want to have like an object of all the rates but instead we want just those keys not the values so here instead of putting rates as currencies we will do object keys like this same here object keys rates now it works and we have all the currencies here okay now let's just fix formatting here so it will be easier to read and now when something changes here i want to recalculate the opposite value so i need to know if something changes inside this currency input so let's go inside and there are two things that can change the input value so the amount and the selected currency so let's start with amount here let's do on change and let's use props here so props let's say on amount change and we'll have an event here and we'll put event target value all right now same with our select on change we will get event and with this event let's run props on currency change and event target value okay now let's define those two functions inside our prop types so here on amount change will be a function and on currency change will also be a function okay now back to app.js and now it will be easier to add them here so on amount change we get an amount and we want to set it as amount one so we can do just set amount one and same here but for on amount change we'll do set amount two we can do the same with the currency so on currency change we do set currency one and here on currency change set currency two okay now we can change the inputs but nothing will happen so we need to use the rates here from our api endpoint to recalculate all the values here so to fix this i will create functions for every possible change we can do inside our app so for example on this one on amount change we don't want to only update the amount one but we also want to recalculate everything so let's create a function function let's call this one handle amount one change and we get a new amount one and inside this function we want to update our state so set amount one with new amount one and here we can replace it with this function handle amount one change 
but we also want to recalculate everything. So when this amount one changes, we want to update the amount two. So we need to do set amount two and we need to calculate our amount two. So amount two will be amount one times and now times rates of currency two divided by rates of currency one. Okay, let's test it. Yeah, I think it works. Let's test with, I don't know, this. And if I change something here, yeah, it looks like it works. So now I want also to update the other value when, when we change the currency here inside our selects. So let's do function handle currency one change and we'll use this here and we will basically just run the same code to recalculate amount two but we will set currency one here from currency one so now when i change this the second input is recalculated okay so now we need to do the same for the second input and the second select here so i can basically copy those two functions like this and rename those to amount two and currency two and in amount two we'll get amount two we will set amount one because if we change something here we want to update this so amount one will be amount two times rate of currency one divided by rate of currency two and we want to update amount two with the new amount two Okay, so now I can copy this part to our currency uh, change. And here, set currency will be set currency on currency two. And this one should be renamed like this. So when the amount two changes, I want to, of course, save the amount two to our state, but I want to also recalculate amount one, so this one and I will use this new amount to value to recalculate amount one. Now those functions are great because those are not used yet. So let's put them in use. So let's do handle amount to change and let's do here handle currency to change. So now if I change something here, let's do 100, everything updates. Now those numbers are really long, so it will be nice to format them a little. So I'll create a function called just format and with the number let's return number to fixed and four okay so now we can use this format function inside every handle function that we have so all all of those four so i will do like this and inside each function i will go here inside the parentheses and i will add format like this now if i save reload and let's change this to, I don't know, this. Yes, we get only four digits after the dot. So that's all, we can change default currencies to USD and Euro. And to recalculate those on the beginning, we need to add another use effect. And when the rates changes, when those are fetched, we want to check if those are not empty, so we want to recalculate the second input and here inside we just need to do handle amount one change and let's put one here so now it calculates the opposite value on the beginning when we load our app and then i've changed this to five the opposite value will be calculated and then yeah it works if i change yeah everything works now i will just add some basic styling so it will look better and here Let's add a h1 currency converter and on the top inside our app CSS that is empty now. Let's do body background color of something dark, maybe 16, 16, 16 and color will be DDD and h1 color will be PEF. Let's also add some padding here to our body and let's center the header here and now to style those i will create a separate file with styles so here inside currency input we will add styles just for those so here i will create a new file 
currency input.css and I will import it here. So import and currency input CSS. And here inside, let's tie our group. So this is like one group and here is the second group of inputs. Let's add some background. Let's say the background will be 335. The width will be 180 pixels. Margin, yeah, let's add some margin. So margin from the top will be zero. From the sides it will be auto and on the bottom it will be 20 pixels. Now the display type will be grid and we need to define template columns. So grid template columns will be 100 pixels and 80 pixels. Yeah, so now the input is next to the select. Let's also add some border radius of let's say 15 pixels. Now let's style our input and select. So both input and select, we want to remove the background from them. So background none and also border. So border zero. Now let's make those a little bigger and the text should be white. So let's do color white. Okay, now in select, we want to add some padding on the left side. So the input padding left, let's say 10 pixels. And inside select, we want to make also some padding. Let's just say padding on all sides, 15 pixels. Yeah, now it looks much better. So that's all for today. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.